I recently got this old PlayStation 3 from a friend of mine. Only downside is that the system doesn't work anymore. But rather than just throwing it in the trash, let's have a look inside, salvage a couple of useful parts and clear the comment mystery from my previous laser diode video which says that such a Blu-ray laser diode is capable of burning things. Let's find it out. To crack this thing open, I firstly removed the hidden screw, took off the cover plate and continued by removing all the screws which were labeled with an arrow. Then I used a bit of force to detach the upper plastic case and only need to unplug a couple of wires to receive the anticipated Blu-ray drive. But before going into detail about it, let's firstly see what else we can extract from the PlayStation. Right beside the now missing Blu-ray drive sits the main power supply of the system, which is pretty powerful with its 12V 23.5 amp output. Only problem is that even if I apply power to it, the output does not want to turn on. After taking off its top cover, inspecting the circuit a bit and doing some research, I realized though that we need to apply a 3.3V signal to pin one of those control pins. So I used a 10 and 20 kilo ohm resistor in this constellation to build up a simple voltage divider. And after reattaching the top cover, plugging in a pair of banana plugs and flipping the main switch, I measured a voltage of 12 volts and was capable of powering all sorts of electronics. Which means this small hack is almost complete. Why almost? Well, I don't like the fact that the power supply is upside down. So I got a simple piece of wood, marked a square around the power supply, used a saw to create the shape, marked the necessary mounting holes, drilled those afterwards and finally used M4 45mm spacers, nuts and bolts to secure the power supply to the wood. And after gluing the main switch to the wood as well, this hack was complete and works flawlessly. I also dug deeper through the PS3 in order to find the main PCB and a rather beefy 12V fan, which I will keep for later. Now let's get back to the Blu-ray drive. While I removed the first screws on the outside, I noticed a sticker which warns us about Class 1M laser radiation. Apparently not as dangerous and powerful as the Class 3B of a DVD burner, but I still continued by taking off the metal casing and bending two metal holders in order to extract the Blu-ray drive's head. And at this point it is not really difficult to spot the two laser diodes. So I firstly cut through the flexible flat cable and then crushed the glue around them to free them from their prison. Afterwards, I removed the remaining flexible PCB by heating up the pins with a soldering iron while simultaneously lifting off the PCB. Then I soldered a small piece of wire to each pin of the two diodes and started experimenting with the 4 pin one by applying a small constant current to each pin. Eventually, I found a setup in which a red light got emitted, but no violet light for me so far. So I tried the same test with the 3 pin diodes and immediately got the results I was looking for. Now to power the diode without my lab bench power supply, I could use the constant current source I built in the previous video, but that would be boring. So I got a common LM317 adjustable voltage regulator, which works as a constant current source if the adjust pin is connected to the output pin through a resistor. The output current is given by this formula, so by using a 3.9 ohm resistor we get a maximum current of 320 milliamps. And by adding a 100 ohm potentiometer we can adjust the current down to 12 milliamps. And don't worry about destroying the 0.25 watt potentiometer through the relatively big current. I did a couple of calculations beforehand and as it turns out the maximum power loss through the potentiometer is only 0.1 watts, so perfectly fine. I also hooked up a current meter in series to the loads and tested the finished circuit with the laser diode from a DVD burner. And just as expected the current adjustment works and the diode ignites a match without a problem. Now in order to test the Blu-ray laser, I simply swapped the diodes, but did not destroy the heatsink of the violet laser yet. After doing some fine adjustments, I cranked the current up to a point where the visible light beam reaches maximum brightness, but no matter what I tried, the match did not get ignited. 
I later tried the same test without the heatsink of the diode, but did not get a successful result as well, but at least I now have a violet laser pointer, which is not bad. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming, stay creative and I will see you next time.